Welcome to a quick overview of getting your second semester Waddle site up and operational. And this is going to be a quick run through going from the default blank template. As you can see, I've got the social marketing site untouched, unedited, and the changes will be real and take effect immediately. So have confidence, enjoy, because what we're about to do is tune up a site from scratch. So first thing you do when you want to have a bit of background preparation. Things that you're going to need to prepare in advance. The first thing is that you want to have your concourse outline available. Now, again, in the here's one we've prepared earlier category, is your course outline on concourse would have been something that you've prepared so you'll have your key information, your learning outcomes, your course description, any background information, schedule, and this is a particularly useful aspect. It will have your schedule, your overview, the other thing it's really missing is the dates, and your assessment overview with the assessment dates. So have that one open in a second window or a second tab. Because we're only record in one video, one window and in one screen, it'll be open in a second tab. I also like to, when I'm preparing a course, have Google Scholar just hanging around in the background. I will inevitably go out to Google something, usually calendars and dates as well, so a third tab, spare tab open for Google and quick searches. The other thing that's useful is that if you've had the opportunity to teach a subject for a second time or you've done some background preparation, I'm very much the advocate of the cooking show approach of here's one I've prepared earlier. In this case, what I have in the stuff I've prepared earlier are the component parts of the last time social marketing was on offer. There are obviously going to be changes there are going to be component upgrades, there are going to be things that you will tweak between semesters, but having your content already in place, for example, having sorted your content by week, means that it's going to be a lot easier to just get straight into the drag and drop and the component parts. So moving back into Wattle. First, the starting point. Now, the natural starting point would be to hit turn editing on. But where I also want to kick off from is I want to go straight into edit settings. So even before I go and change the course name, in edit settings, you get the course start date. And this is a very important decision because this will now help Wattle calculate the weeks. Now in this case, we know that we're slightly out in our course starting date. So 2016, and believe me, what will allows you to prepare one in advance, 2050, heaven only knows what the course LMS would look like by then, but we know that we're kicking off on a Monday, it's the 18th of July is our starting point, and this is the first decision. Does your week start on Sunday, or does your week start on Monday? Now for me, I run my subject so that the week starts on the Monday. This way, and this is my personal preference, is that it's a starting point for Monday, but you can start this on a Sunday. Why is this important? Because when we come down the page to course format, if we go from topics format to weekly format, with the starting date of the 18th, and we'll just save the changes now so I can demonstrate this. Those are the running dates of the weeks. And it will automatically head over into selecting this on the week's arrival. So if you want to run a staggered, if you want to start Sunday, if you want to start Wednesday, you can, knowing that these are the weeks. Personally, I think you're safer on Monday. Second thing that in the edit settings, so for you, you want to do this all at once. In edit settings, 
Back over in Concourse, you gave your course a description. And I'm going to take the one sentence description from the first sentence of my course description. I'm going to come down here to course summary and I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to keep forgetting that the right click paste doesn't work. Keyboard commands work, mouse commands don't. We save the changes and there are other elements in here that we can mess around with later, but for the most part these are the key elements you want to start with. If you just quickly pop back up to look at your course roster, it gives you the details of your course. So I've also on services put in an icon. I don't have an icon ready for social at this point, nor one for the second services. We're going back into our main course. The main changes you want to make is you want to set to the dates. Students, the feedback we've received from accessibility training and from around the campus is that the date-based approach is preferred by students. It helps them, again, with tracking for assessment tasks. And it's also the way that we tend to think. Unless you want to go in and edit and call it week one, week two, week three, which we'll demonstrate in a second, you're probably better off just keeping it to the dates. Now, second step is we want to make it the first of the changes, the Agile course title, social marketing. Now, I can be not lazy and just type it in. Go to four. As a matter of small personal preference, I always do like a good header to be set to the middle. We have the background, the genetic material. An important decision to make here is how much stuff do you want to have on the recurring because this will be what the students see every week above their weekly briefings. The second step is going to be to get into the course convener information and to make the changes here. And this is where the course convener block configuration We come back to concourse to see what did we tell people about us. So the lecturer is me, and in this case the lecturer will be you. We might tune that down a little, make it a little less obvious, maybe a four. Now remember what I said about always having a Google tab open in the background is the CBE page. So if you don't know your CBE page, straight off the top of your head, and not all of us do, quick shortcut if you want to insert a URL. Control K on a Windows machine is the way to do it. And if you do a lot of this particular type of in linking in work, you'll find it becomes uh, quite second nature. Now the image inserting, I don't. I tend to do, take a different photo for each semester. I tend to use a different photo, but since we'll live with the one I've stuck with uh, here on my research. Actually, there's a better version of me out there. I'm just, I'm going to be vain for a moment. We all have CVE pages and we have ANU pages. So in your ANU researcher profile, you copy the image address. Now, I always like to have the toolbar out on maximum because I do like to work with all the available toys at my disposal. This is the insert edit image icon. On the find or upload, now we have a URL, we'll paste the URL straight in there. The image description, this is something that for accessibility purposes is very important. It also is 
really useful if people, if you have students who are going to be using mobile devices. Text descriptions, text elements of around your image makes life easier for your students. And if there's one thing that we don't want to do in the age of CELTS is make life harder unless it has a purpose. So there's no point making life difficult for no purpose. If we want the difficulty to be focused around assessment tasks and challenges, not around things we can easily. Again, because I have a slight element of I do love an image to be centered. Now, in this case, I do actually happen to have an online appointment booking scheme, but I'll add that in later because I don't have the URL quite to hand. Save changes, course convener sidebar, done. You can then decide what other elements you want to have on the side panels. CV information, if you're going to be doing live lecture recording, the Echo 360 panel. I'm not using course completion uh, as a choice, and this is something that's over in your settings. Again, design decisions that you can make on the fly. You can change this later. But if you come down here to course format, there's also the element that I like to set up a 16 week structure, a 16 unit structure, because we have the 12 weeks of semester. And I like to cluster my assessment into one particular block. I also think that this is a good opportunity to use the invisible task area. So these are personal preferences. In the appearance, we have uh, several other controls here. Files and uploads, I keep to the defaults. Completion tracking. Now I've used this for several semesters and the problem I run into is that I use a lot of images in the design of my sites and each image has to be clicked on manually to be deemed to be completed. And I find that that didn't help. So this semester, the completion tracking was not as useful as I would like it to have been. And if you are going to be doing things with groups and tutorials or if you're going to be running a co-badge class, you have the opportunity to work that through the groups mode here. It's not something I do, so it's not something I'm going to cover in the setup. There's also role renaming, and I will say is that whilst I periodically do this, you are advised just to leave them on the default. So, a couple of qu quick tweaks in the background. With the course tracking off, you can then just simply drop the course completion block. The first block that I will recommend you add, so before we make any content elements, bring any of those online, is I like to be able to contact my students through the, through the site. You may also take the moment just to review what are the elements that are in here that are of use to you. I have a bit of exploration and calendar, clock, particularly on a semester two subject where time zones are going to be an issue, where daylight saving will kick in, drop in the clock, because what the clock does is it tells you, tells the student the server time, and we'll rearrange these in a second, but I also have a soft spot for putting in people, and I usually end up adding in the evaluation self button at the start and just making it invisible whilst we're doing this. All of these are being done at the start so you can think through some of your design decisions. One column layout, two column layout. What order do you want to present material? Now I don't use recent activity so I will hide that away. Latest news I think has its role and I think we should keep that in place. I think course communion is the second or third most useful piece of information that could be there. Clock is my preference, so I put that up 
on the top of the page. Calendar, because once you start setting assessment tasks, the calendar goes and comes into its own. I think latest news. Course convener. I'm going to, have to drop recent activity down the bottom. But I'm also going to make a couple of things, elements, invisible at this point because they're of use to me, they're not necessarily of use to the students. Now, because I'm going to use a full pre recorded design and a non recording tutorial room, I'm going to switch off Echo 360. I'll do that later. For you, there's a set of configurations you want to do around this just to enable that you want to make certain that your students have easy access to their recorded classes. And I think that's basically tuned up and people as well. People has an interesting role because when you hit participants that you can send messages to the group. So you can and I use this quite a lot in the course, is that I will contact students en masse to announce that release of grades has occurred, to communicate important updates, particularly around assessment tasks, if I get a really good set of questions around an assignment. Being able to send a message through Wattle is a particularly powerful tool for staying in touch, for giving that sort of personal touch. So I always ensure that I've got the people element set up so I can reach out and message any of my students. So this is my default setup. A clock, a calendar, the news, the contact information around me, the resources around the university, CBE's Intel. If I was doing pre-records, Echo 360 would be further up the page. You'd probably be sitting there in place of latest news. And one other tweak. You'll note that I set up to do a 16-week semester, and we've got the orphaned activities back here. So with the orphaned activities, we want those to be invisible. So we can hide things now. We can have this information at the back. And I use this uh, I use this to drop out materials. So I can provide a short-term set of information to students. Then when it's no longer relevant, for example, preparation notes leading up to an assessment task, I can drop those elements down into this closed section at the back so I don't have to delete them from the site, they're just simply not visible. So if required, I can come back, grab them, put them back in. The last element that I want to draw your attention to is setting up a week. Now this is where Concourse again comes into its own, because Concourse will give a crucial set of information. We'll really you want to do is you want to set up so that some of the mission critical information from here is shared back across. So in week one, again, you have an option here. If you want, you can rename the sections. So you can name in this case I would actually prefer to do this as a We have the components in, this will tick over, so we now know week one, we're going to do a weekly structure. It's a simple case that students can look at this and go, All right, I know where I am, what week is it, what content are we covering. In terms of the here's things we've prepared earlier, there is a reading and a PowerPoint slide deck. So in the things we've prepared earlier, and this is why I like my week by week folders, is now, a word on PowerPoints. Because this is my document, I do have the copyright opportunity to go and provide it 
in its own right here. For the most part, if you are setting a reading, what you need to do is produce that reading as a link. It is not the most efficient mechanism for the distribution. It's the most legal mechanism for the distribution. And this cannot be stressed hard enough. So what you want to do is you want to do a Google Scholar two for one. You want to get the link. And firstly, you want to check that the link works because you are going to be asking your students to download. So we will confirm. Yes, the article works. So the article is visible whilst on an ANU platform. So we set this add activity or resource. We add the URL. I always like to get the link first, paste it into the external URL, then give it a name. In this case, it's going to be the short version, the same as the PowerPoint. But here's where your use of Scholar comes in handy, is that under Scholar site, you can now pick which is your preferred style. I'm a bit of a fan of the APA style guide. So we'll copy that. We will paste that in here. Display course description, external URL. We'll cross check all the other things. How do we want it displayed? New window. Nothing else we need to worry about there. Save and return the course. And what we have is a set reading that has the appropriate attribution. So we're starting to already teach students citation attributions. And what we can also do, though, is have a difference between what we provide to the students and what we do for our own. So we can have this as the official link. But to ensure that when we're standing in a lecture theatre, if we can see what or we can see our reading for the week, is we can set that to be invisible. So we can go through, set up our own libraries, download our own files, have those available to ourselves. So if we want to print out a copy, if we want to access a copy, we want to prepare from home the readings for this week's class, we've got these. Under the copyright and playing nicely by copyright, you want to always use the link. The other reason that you want to always use the link is also a little bit of academic, uh, academic assistance. When people add this to, again, I'm looking here showing you my particular reading. It's in here because you know, it's a core reading for my subject because it's explaining my position on the subject matter to my students. But you also will know that there's a set of metrics around these subjects. So when you're setting something, and you're setting a, a reading for a subject, the downloads from these elements can be used and can support your colleagues and co-authors. So not only is it the better legal version, it's actually the more ethical approach to have the traffic, drive the traffic back to the master file. It also means things like if there are corrections, retractions, changes, updates, these are all made available through the master copy of the file. So a quick test of that. It pops up in a new window. The other element that should be noted in this is that it does give students the opportunity to do some further exploration. What papers have cited this? What papers did it cite? Because you also have access to things like the interactive reference lists. It's a stronger, more effective mechanism. And it's a real teaching opportunity to explain the value and role of citation. And we're all about that in our courses. So the final thing in terms of uh, additions and elements to do here and this is just uh, a small thing that I like to do is I like to cluster my assessment tasks down the back end so students know how to access them. It's up to you where you want to put that particular material. But with the Turnitin 2 assignment, in terms of things that you want to prepare earlier, it's really useful to note that once you 
have these particular elements, again, because you've come from your concourse site, you have a whole series of this information available. So you've already established what you're going to call it. It's important to note that uh, if you call it essay, anytime the word essay appears, it will automatically link it to this. The summary wants to come from concourse. So any information that you have put into concourse, you want to use that and put that into the Turnitin system. So the preparations that you've done in concourse get to be reused. Now it's up to you if you want to do the display description on course page. I tend not to. You also can ensure that you are aligning 30, 30, 30, excellent. Submission of any type, no. Originality, yes. We have, again, concourse. We set the dates inside here as to when things are going to be due. So 10 a.m. week six, which I'm going to have to work out on the top of my head. But the other thing that's particularly useful, by the way, is that you can open up multiple windows now. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 22nd of August. I always set the start date to be as immediate as possible. Use your calendar uh, wherever possible so you can also ensure that you're eyeballing like, yep, that's a Monday if you want it to be due on a Monday. Uh, it's about what times you also, if you set those in concourse, 10 a.m. Whoops, I always did do that. Post date is also important. You want to set this to be a reasonable length of time from when you expect to receive to when you expect to return grades. On the originality reports, always allow submissions after, for a full assignment, for a real assignment, always allow submissions after the due date. This solves so many problems. If you close and have a hard cutoff, then any student who has an extension won't be able to be marked in turn it in. And that will be a differential approach between your students who are on time, your students who are late. It opens you up to appeals of grade, it causes problems, and it's so much slower than the fast speed marking you can do in turn it in. Turn it in can be so much better. You want to store, because this is an assignment, you want to store in standard repository. Check against your preferences here. I tend to uh, exclude bibliography. I know other people like to have bibliography checked, so we'll go with the checking. You can, if you've established rubrics, you can set up your rubrics in advance, and these are particularly useful. We are really pushing through both concourse, that rubrics will be made available. This is how you can make those rubrics available. And there was, in fact, if I was to use last year's protocol, here would be a rubric I'd prepared earlier. So I could, in fact, do this, deploy previous rubric. Save, return, add this to Wattle. Now this is sitting in the assessment block at the end of the semester. Which I will just now rename. The other thing you'll note is with the calendar now, this is why the calendar is critical and why the calendar needs to be here and quite highly placed, is it clearly flags to the students, hey, incoming assessment task. Now as it happens, I like to, I, I've been using draft reads and turn it in. Those will also show up on here. So the students get prompts and reminders. You really want to set up an environment where 
the guidelines are clear. It's very well established on your design specs of what's going to happen and when. And that makes life easier for you just to be able to open up Wobble and go, where are we at and what are we doing? So these are some of the just quick speed setup moments of getting your first week in place, getting your materials underway. For the point in time where you've done recordings, we can then simply add in external content under Add Activity Resources. It's very easy to insert additional materials, particularly around if you want to add in a video. And there is a, a quick set of, you know, if you've done your own recording, let me quickly grab a, a video off YouTube that would make sense for this particular context. So external, you can set an external video And this is basically your setup for your semester. It's very quick to be able to drop in content and resources. If you want to use tracking and other information, there are advanced modes you can set to here. What you also want to do is have a quick look over the subject just in the student mode before we go ahead to make sure that everything does look the way you expect it to look. It's not a perfect representation, but it's close. And finally, the other thing that should be noted about this approach is that this is really about ensuring that the framework that we set up in Concourse comes across and gets implemented into Wattle so that the students have the signposts. Because one of the elements that's in our CELTS is I understood the tasks that were required of me. So signposting is a critical communications role, and it's something that we can do quite easily with a bit of forward planning and design thinking around what do we want to do with our Waddle sites, how do we want to communicate to our students. As always, if you need anything, I am available. I'm more than happy to walk people through this process in person, sit over your shoulder, talk design spec, and show off what I've done with my other sites. So this is the quick and dirty how to get your site up and running in just over 30 minutes.